Hello everybody. For this week's tutorial, i like to discuss the difference between static and kinetic friction, which is also called sliding friction, as well as how to calculate these exactly, like how you can calculate the weight exactly by multiplying the mass times acceleration from gravity. As discussed in the first video on friction, the amount of friction you will experience increases with more force of the objects pressing against each other, and also increases with more roughnesses of both the surfaces contacting each other. And so the formula you will see in many textbooks is that the force of friction is equal to the ratio of the roughnesses called the coefficient of friction represented with a bleeding U-shape called mu, which is a Greek letter, with a subscript of F just like the force of friction is represented with the subscript of F times something called the normal force, which is simply the force that counters the weight of an object, i.e. if a weight presses down against a table, the normal force is the force the table exerts back on the weight which is always exactly the same as the weight, just in the opposite direction. Note that because of the ratio of the contact area between the two objects contacting is always one in these calculations, contact area is not in the formula because it would be simply multiplying by one, which will do nothing. Although this is the general formula for friction, real friction is more complicated and takes the form of static friction and kinetic friction. Static friction is the name that refers to the friction needed to make an object move to begin with, which if you ever tried to push a heavy object like a couch or bookshelf, you would notice yourself that needs a lot of force to move before it can actually have friction due to sliding. As you push on an object at rest, it will increase in static friction until it reaches its maximum static friction, given by a very similar formula to the general friction formula. And looks like F subscript FS equals the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Once you push hard enough that the force goes beyond the maximum static friction, it turns into kinetic friction, which has a formula F subscript FK equals coefficient of kinetic friction times normal force. Note that if you stop pushing or pulling an object, it will have to overcome the static friction again. And as a general rule, static friction is greater than kinetic friction. So the coefficients would be greater as well for the same material ratios.
However, although the coefficient of static friction is greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction, the normal force is always the same because it is always the weight of the object. And the coefficient of static and kinetic frictions cannot be easily calculated, but would have to be experimentally derived using different materials. So for example, the ratio of glass on ice would be much smaller than the ratio of leather on metal for both static and kinetic friction. How exactly you would experiment around and derive the exact amount of the coefficient of static and kinetic friction would be to slide the materials against one another, figure out the normal force by noticing that it is equal to the weight, which in turn is equal to mass times gravity of the top object. And then because friction in both instances is equal to the mass times acceleration along the horizontal component, although in the opposite direction, you would calculate the mass times acceleration of the horizontal motion of the object. And then divide that by the weight. Note that the masses cancel out, so all you're left with is horizontal acceleration over acceleration due to gravity. The formula for the coefficient of static friction would be static friction force divided by weight. or normal force if you want to stick to the traditional formula definition. However, you may notice a problem and that you cannot easily calculate the force of static friction either because the mathematical formula for force, mass times acceleration, will not work as by definition, static friction means no acceleration. So you'd have to manually measure the force if you want to be mathematically exact using a force gauge or a similar device. And then divide that by the weight of the top object, like with kinetic friction. Now that I've gone over how to calculate friction mathematically, I can discuss a new type of force called tension. And common problems you will see regarding tension forces.